I'm Any New Province, and this week we're going to find out if Sarah Disciple and Artificer's Assistant are possibly Popper playable. Both of these brand new birds came to the Popper format with the release of Dominaria. They both care about you casting artifacts, so I decided I would build a Spellbomb deck. Before I break down the birds for you, I just want to let you know that another Popper YouTuber has a great spell bomb deck called Bomberman. Their name's Lobert. I'll link the video in the description down below. I'm going to start off by explaining the two new birds. First, we have Sarah Disciple, which costs one and a white for a 1 1 flying first striker. And whenever you cast a historic spell, which in Popper is just artifacts, Sarah Disciple gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. I definitely undervalued this card before I started testing with it. On the surface, it looks like you should cast a ton of artifact cards to make Sarah Disciple into an explosive aggressive threat. In reality, Sarah Disciple's first strike ability actually gives it a lot of versatility on defense. You can get Sarah Disciple in the way of your opponent's Delver of Secrets, pump it at instant speed, and then kill off their creature without losing your own threat. Next is Artificer's Assistant, which costs 1 blue for a 1 1 flyer, which is anemic on its own, but whenever you cast a historic spell, you get to scry 1. Our deck relies heavily on synergy, so the scry ability on Artificer's Assistant really helps us draw into the right half of our deck when we need it. Sometimes we just want another artifact spell to pump up our Sarah Disciple, but other times we need a cantrip so we can keep our land drops flowing. Artificer's Assistant and Sarah Disciple are both, at their core, 1-1 flyers, so I thought for this deck to get there, we were going to need some more aggressive threats to go along with them. First, we have Oriok Sun Chaser, which costs 1 and a white for a 1-1 with Metal Craft, which means as long as you control 3 or more artifacts, Oriok Sun Chaser gets plus 2, plus 2, and has flying. A 2-mana 3-3 three, three flyer is a great threat. The reason there's only 2 here is because we cash in a lot of our artifacts, so we can't always guarantee that we'll have 3 on the battlefield at a time. Our last aggressive threat is Seeker of the Way, and it may very well be our best one. It costs 1 and a white for a 2-2 two, two with Prowess, which means whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Also, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Seeker of the Way gains lifelink until end of turn. In this deck, Seeker of the Way is effectively another 4 copies of Sarah Disciple that has lifelink instead of evasion. All of our artifact spells are going to pump it up, and we can even include a few other non-creature spells to help it along the way. Next, we have some interaction to help out Seeker of the Way with those prowess triggers, but also to clear our opponent's board to sneak in our big attackers early in the game. Our first interactive spell is Vapor Snag. It's one blue for an instant that returns target creature to its owner's hand. Its controller loses one life. While Seeker of the Way is on the battlefield, this can represent a 7 point life swing, but it can also help protect our fragile threats from our opponent's interaction. We've also got 3 Journey to Nowheres, which cost 1 and a white for an enchantment that says, when Journey to Nowhere enters the battlefield, exile target creature. When Journey to Nowhere leaves the battlefield, return the exiled creature to the battlefield under its owner's control. Our pumped up creatures can attack through almost anything, but we need these catch-all threats so that we can exile our opponent's Spire Golems and Gurmog Anglers to stop them getting in the way. I've also included some card filtering and card advantage, because they do go great with Seeker of the Way, but they can also help smooth out some of the other inconsistencies in our deck. First we have Preordain, which costs 1 blue for a sorcery, and it says Scry 2, draw a card. We've also got Think Twice, which costs 1 and a blue for an instant that draws you a card. You can also pay its flashback cost, which is 2 and a blue, to exile it from your graveyard and cast it again. Think Twice is a fine cantrip on its own, but the reason it's so great here is that we can trigger Seeker of the Way's prowess and lifelink ability twice with it at instant speed. Leon and Squire is our last bit of card advantage. It costs 1 and a white for a 2-2, and when it enters the battlefield, you can return target artifact card with converted mana cost 1 or less from your graveyard to your hand. Being able to buy back our spell bombs after we've already used them once is good enough on its own, but with Leon and Squire and Lotus Petal, you can also have really explosive turn ones where you have 3 or 4 power on the battlefield. Finally, we have our artifacts, some of the coolest spells in the deck. First, we have Lotus Petal, which is a 0 mana artifact that you can tap and sacrifice to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. Next, we have 1 copy of Chromatic Star over the 4th copy of Lotus Petal. It costs 1 mana and you can pay 1, tap it, and sacrifice it to add 1 mana of any color. When it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card. Next is our Namesake Spell Bombs. We have one copy of Aether Spell Bomb, which costs a generic mana, and you can pay a blue, sacrifice Aether Spell Bomb, and return target creature to its owner's hand. We can use this to get our opponent's creatures out of the way or protect our own creatures. If we don't have to do either of those things, we can pay one generic mana, sacrifice Aether Spell Bomb, and draw a card. Next, we have three copies of Pyrite Spell Bomb, which necessitates a little bit of a splash into red and also explains all of our color fixing artifacts. It costs one generic mana, and you can pay red, sacrifice it to deal two damage to any target. If you don't need to do that, you can also pay one and sacrifice it to draw a card. 
One of the coolest things this deck can do is buy back all of the artifacts I've mentioned so far with Leon and Squire. We can play our Leon and Squire out, get back an artifact, cast it, and trigger all of our creatures on the battlefield again. The only artifact we can't buy back with Leon and Squire has to be in this deck anyway. It's Tooth of Chisgora. It costs 3 generic mana, it has flash, meaning that we can use it to trigger our Seeker of the Way or Sarah Disciple at instant speed. It has affinity for artifacts, which means it costs 1 less for each artifact we control, and you can tap it to give target creature plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. It has been so fun to play with this card so far. It turns almost all of our little flyers into vertical threats, and you can really surprise your opponent by pumping up two of your creatures and giving your first striker an extra plus one plus zero. All right, let's have a look at this mana base. First, we have eight artifact lands, four ancient dens that tap for white, and four seed of the synod that tap for blue. We need lots of artifacts to keep our Oriok Sun Chasers online and to keep our Teeth of Chisgora nice and cheap. Next, we have Azorius Chancery, your Azorius Karoo. When it enters the battlefield, you have to return a land you control to your hand. It also enters the battlefield tapped, and when it becomes untapped, it taps for white and blue. Next, we have four Evolving Wilds, just your standard popper fetches. You can tap them, sacrifice them, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. These are a little bit slow for our strategies, but if we're going to have a red splash, then we're going to need a way to find those mountains. Finally, we have our basics. Three basic islands, two basic plains, and two basic mountains. We have just enough basics so that we can do turn one preordain or Leon and Squire with a lotus petal, and we also have two mountains for some of our greedy sideboard cards. And here's the sideboard. First, we have three standard bears for picking up all of our opponent's pump spells and auras. We have two dispels to be a little bit more efficient when we're trying to force through threats or stop our opponent from casting pump spells. We have three hydroblasts to really lock up that burn matchup. We have two electricaries to wrath our opponent's boards if they're on all X ones. We have two gorilla shamans for blowing up all of Affinity's lands. We have two celestial flares if our opponents are trying to boggle up. And we have one patrician scorn, just in case our opponent's trying to boggle up. And there it is, Jeskai Spell Bombs featuring Sarah Disciple and Artificer's Assistant. We're going to take this deck live into a league at twitch.tv slash anynewprovince this Tuesday night at 7pm Atlantic Time. We're there every Tuesday night playing possibly popper playable decks. Before I go, I just want to remind you that you can like the video or subscribe to the channel down below. I'd seriously appreciate it. It's a great way to let me know you've enjoyed everything, and it really encourages me to keep making great popper content. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech, and hopefully I'll see you on Tuesday night.